sorry there was a time limit on the video so we're back um so instead of those tests that you know it are almost impossible on a distant learning platform for math i give projects um and they're not like the big projects where you have long essay writing this is a math class so i really would perf prefer you not to do long essays so whenever there is paragraph writing i'm going to give you a rubric the rubric might have five different things you're supposed to do each one write one sentence so if it says tell me the domain write one sentence for domain do not write me three sentences for the domain right if it says describe the graph i'm usually going to give you the details on which i want you to describe don't tell me the graph looks pretty okay don't tell me the graph is going up and down use the math terms that we learned at that time and make it nice and brief the fillers that you use for English are not necessary for math. So when I'm looking for those projects, I really am looking for you to condense your writing and just answer the question. Quizzes are 20%. Those will be our shorter assessments, um, usually like four questions. Sometimes they'll be during the assignment. I will let you know when that is. Um, and that depends on whether we have class time or I'm just going to give you a quiz on Google. We'll figure that out as we go. Participation, that is just actively being a part of the Google Classroom. That is also included in the questioning that's gonna happen. Google, class, Google Classroom questioning is a part of that first rules quiz. They are five points. You get three points for answering it, the question. Not a simple yes or no. If you do one word answers, you won't get the full three points. So full phrases or a sentence. Again, not a paragraph though. Then those other two points you get from answering to someone else. You Once you answer the question, you'll be able to see everybody else's answer, and then you reply to them. If you're the first person to answer the question, nobody's answers will be up there to reply. That means you have to go back at a later time to reply. The point of that is to have conversation with that question. It is active learning. Um, and here's how you also get credit, extra credit. If you reply to a person, you right, you get those full two points and now you got five points for that question. You can now go and reply to another person, that's another point, and another person, and that's another point. You can reply to everyone in your classroom. There's about at least 20 people in every class, excuse me, so you can get at least 19 extra credit points. So that's an easy way to get extra credit points. Now remember, they have to be full responses each time. You can't respond to one person and then everybody else respond to yep agreed yep agreed yep agreed okay because that's not conversation um and class assignments those are going to vary they might be a worksheet um for google classroom when i post worksheets there's multiple ways to turn them in if you're a person who needs to write it down on a notebook, you can do so. Take a picture of it and upload the picture. Making sure the picture is clear and legible. Because if I can't see your answers and your work given, because math is about the work, not the answer, then I can't give you credit. The other way is to send all your stuff in PDF. You open it. It just say open with on top of Google Classroom. And it says Lumi, I think it's called Lumi, Lumi PDF. And now you can write right on that on your computer. Um, and then you can save that document and re-upload that document. Rubrics are given on Google Classroom. Grades are earned, not given. I talked to you about extra credit. Um, absent, if you're ever absent, assignments are on Google Classroom, they're st you're still required to do them. Now, if you are sick with COVID, if something happened in your family, if they're, you're sick with the flu because flu season is coming, like any of those things, please reach out to me because realistically, I don't want to make you do work when you have a fever, right? Um, but I don't know that unless you reach out to me. And you need to reach out to me in a reasonable time. So if assignment is due October 3rd, mark period's over November 6th. On November 3rd, you text me and tell me on October 3rd, that you had a fever that's not valid that assignment is still missing late zero whatever that is but october 3rd happens say you do have a fever that day you're probably not going to text me that day maybe by october 5th you reach out to me hey the last week this this and this happened then we can have a conversation on how to proceed and when your assignment is due otherwise if october 3rd is here you're not in class october 3rd your assignment is still due most of your assignments i give you minimum two days 
big projects, I usually give you a month, right? I usually assign them a whole month ahead of time. So make sure that you are doing your assignments when they're due. Don't wait till last minute because that's going to hurt you. And if you're sick, right, I'm not usually giving you another month to do the assignment. I'm usually giving you another couple days because you shouldn't have been doing your assignment that last day when it was due. So please, please, please make sure that you do it at a reasonable time. Um, respect. We talked about respect. No profanity in my class. No offensive words that might be considered profanity. And I make that decision, right? So if I tell you, no, you can't say that in this class, you'd be like, it's not that big of a deal. It doesn't matter. I still don't think you should say that in this class. So please don't say it in this class. You know, we don't do the playful. You're ugly. That kind of stuff, even if you guys are friends, because I don't know who's really friends and who's not. I don't know whose feelings are hurt and who's not. And I would just prefer no one leaves my classroom feeling low about themselves. So we don't do any of that kind of playful uh, rudeness in my classroom. Preparation. Charge your computer every day. I know that some people still can't log on. I'm, that's, it's just as aggravating for me as it is for you. We're going to try to work out those kinks within the next week. Um, on my opening letter is all the problems that people have been emailing and hopefully those helped. Um, let's see. Cell phones. Please don't use your cell phone in my class. Please don't use your cell phone in my class. Please don't use your cell phone in my class. It's rude and disrespectful. It's as if you're talking to me and I'm completely ignoring you. And I would never do that, so I need you not to do that to me. Um, there will be times where I let you listen to music. If you're doing an individual worksheet, you could put one headphone in, only one, so you can still hear me if needed. But whenever we're having class discussion or conversation or notes, no headphones, no ear pods, none of the above. Um, laugh, please use a laugh at the beginning of class or at the end of class. We have a whole 90 minute period, so I know that that's extensive time. So if you have to use a laugh, I will let you. But because math, um, notes are really important and I try my hardest to give them at a, you know, at all together so they at least have time to practice in class. So while I'm giving notes, try not to ask me for a laugh as then. If you really have to go, I'd not want to say like, you know, hold it, that it's not really healthy for your body, but try to limit that while I'm giving notes. Um, mass breaks, right? It's not on here because it's so new. But that is a thing. If you need to have a drink of water, since you're allowed to do so, you can step outside for a mass break. If you need to breathe because the mass is overwhelming, right? There are two ways to have it. Never pull it down or up. Probably should have one on to show you. But pull it out so you can let air in without letting your germs out. Or step right outside my classroom. If you need to step outside the classroom for a mass break, you don't need to ask me, right? Just get up so it's not interruptive. But don't go anywhere. Stay in the doorway so you can still hear what's happening in the classroom. If you need a longer mass break, then you need to ask for a pass. And I most likely will give you it because I hate the mass as well. So we all need our breaks. Um, homework and late work. Don't accept late work. That's the short story of it. I give you an extended time to turn in something late. So most things on Google Classroom, if it's due on one day, I give you like three days before I even grade it. Um, so technically you have until I grade it, but once I put it in grade book, I don't go back and accept late work unless there's a strenuous circumstances, but you have to reach out to me at the time it's due, not three weeks later. Okay. Um, and that's it for the open red letter. The rest of that stuff is like school policies, things like that. Um, so in short, that's kind of everything we went over the first time. We were going to do a different lesson, but it's almost impossible to do on Google Classroom. So today we're gonna start with that functions worksheet. I will assign the assignments due. I strongly encourage you not to go ahead with any work because that packet that I gave you is what I use for like in class. And because in class looks so much different this year, I don't know what we're gonna get to and what we're not going to get to. So I might skip page 10 through 15, but you went ahead and did it all. I'm not giving extra credit for that, so don't go ahead because it might not be something you need to do. Now, don't get me wrong. If you are 
into math and you know you're going to go into higher studies in math, do the entire packet and text me if you have questions because everything in that packet is necessary for higher mathematics. So, 